And in fact, not in half a dozen different ways, but the solutions of string theory are incredibly numerous. And in fact, uh, the estimate that people usually quote, although it's, it's highly uh, approximate, is something like 10 to the 500 solutions of string theory. And these solutions fill out what's, what string theorists call a landscape. And uh, each one of them may represent a possible kind of Big Bang. Now, again, this is very speculative uh, because we don't understand string theory at, uh, a really, at the deep level that we need to understand it. But this has already upset some uh, religious leaders. Uh, Cardinal Schönborn, the, car the I know, Cardinal I know his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, of, well, you've had problems with him with yeah. regard to evolution. Yeah, yeah. He wrote an op-ed article in the Times a few years ago in which he, um, he attacked the neo-Darwinian synthesis. Is that the right word? Yeah. 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 And um, he attacked the idea of evolution without design, but he also attacked the multiverse idea. Yes. And that did my heart good to see that because, you know, you evolutionary biologists get all the fun of being <laughs> attacked by religious zealots. And here, Cardinal Schönborn at least knew enough about cosmology to realize we were worth attacking. Um, well, I'm glad you enjoy it. I, I must say I don't mind either. I don't think. <laughs> no, I mean, isn't it better than being ignored? Yes. Uh, there are teachers of biology in this country who tell me that they are intimidated, they don't dare teach these contentious subjects. And I find that hard to understand because I should have thought it would be more interesting to teach her something controversial, but they're frightened of being, uh, I don't know, attacked by parents or by uh, maybe the children themselves sometimes. Well, uh, yes, I mean, uh, the, uh, I think there are school boards that are very backward. Uh, I've, I testified in front of the uh, Texas uh, State Board of Education. Which is particularly influential because of textbooks. Y yes, for some that's reason. right. Yes. It, it's, at that point, uh, they were honestly confused. They really thought that uh, intelligent design was an alternate scientific theory, and why not present both mm. scientific mm. theories? And mm. uh, they were not anti-science. They, uh, they thought it was science. They thought it was science, yes. and they were, I think, I think, in, they, their mind was changed by scientists coming before them and telling them, no, it's not science, it's, it's jiggery pokery. Um, I mean, the myth has been assiduously yeah. promulgated that no, it, that it, it has. is science, That's and they've right. been taken in by it. Uh, I mean, there are people who are uh, much more uh, difficult to deal with than, than I found the Texas Board of Education. And I think, and we won that argument, now it's coming up again in Texas. Um, I think this is beginning to be a problem in Europe. Yes. And I understand it's very much a problem in the Islamic world, yes. that there's a strong prejudice against teaching yes. the theory of evolution. Yes, there. that's true. In fact, perhaps of teaching basic science at all. Uh, the Islamic world uh, took a turn away from science sometime in the 12th or 13th century, which is really quite tragic. Uh, Given their rather good role oh, yeah. in, the, in uh, preserving Greek science before. There's a lovely line in uh, Philip Hitty's book about the Arabs. Uh, he's talking about the great period of the House of Wisdom in Baghdad at the time of Caliphs Harun al-Rashid and al-Mamun. And um, he said, while uh, al-Rashid and al-Mamun were studying Greek and Persian philosophy, uh, Charlemagne and his lords were dabbling in the art of writing their names. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> there you go. Very good. And coming back to the to the alleged fine tuning of the universe, um, I was interested in one of the things you saw. Well, I've many things, but um, I've always tried to explain it uh, as an amateur because I'm not a physicist. Um, having accepted the, the word of physicist that there is a, an element of fine tuning and I've tried to lay out three possible explanations. One, one would be God, which as I've said isn't an explanation at all. One would be um, the um, multiverse and then anthropically with hindsight saying we have to be sitting in one of the universes right. that could give us. But the third one, which I've attributed to you, oh, no. possibly wrongly, oh, no. uh, would be um, 
I, what I call the macho physicists, who say, well, uh, it's just that we don't understand um, uh, why these things that are the other way they are. One day we will, uh, it, when, when we have a theory of everything, it, it will be understood. But it sounds from our conversation as though that I, I misrepresented you there. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I really am not impressed with the amount of fine-tuning there is, with the exception of this one, the, one the, the dark energy. Dark, yes. That might, th I mean, and that you can say qualitatively the amount of dark energy now is comparable to the amount of energy in matter now. It's a few times larger, but it's not very different. Maybe there will be an explanation for that, and, and uh, in a fundamental explanation. Uh, people have aimed at, at that sort of thing. Stephen Hawking, for instance, has. Um, so I think it's fair to say we don't know. If you discovered a really impressive fine-tuning that uh, if you change some otherwise arbitrary parameter, numerical quantity, by 1% in either direction, life would become impossible. And that was just a free constant in your theory. It could have any value. Uh, then I think you would really uh, be left with only the two other explanations, either a benevolent designer or a multiverse. But the benevolent designer we, we, we know can't work because it, it begs the question that you've raised. So that leaves us with a multiverse, doesn't it? Uh, well, it doesn't solve the problem, but it opens up the realm of possible speculation um, in a way that I can't even imagine thinking, but it, it changes the nature of the game. Uh, but the multiverse would be really an explanation then. A very satisfying. I mean, I've heard it said that physicists somehow think it's cheating, but, uh, but I think it's rather elegant. I think it's rather beautiful. Uh, well, we've had to live with this before. You know, um, there was a time when it was thought that the distances of the planets from the sun were dictated by geometrical principles. Kepler yes. had a theory yes. like that, although it was only the ratios of the distances. And it was somewhat of a disappointment to learn with Newton's theory that we were never going to have a fundamental theory of um, the distances of planets from the stars. I mean, each planet is the distance it is because of a historical accidents that can't when will we ever be able to explain precisely why the Earth is 93 million miles from the sun? No, clearly, it's, we're not going to be able to do that. The only explanation is a rather fuzzy anthropic one, which allows for it to be 92 or 94 million miles from the sun. Um, the, uh, the difference between that and the multiverse is, of course, we can see that there are lots of planets. I mean, we can, uh, we have only discovered a few dozen planets in this universe, but our theories tell us they're, they're vast numbers because most, a large fraction of stars seem to have planets. So the existence of the other planets is no longer a, a speculation. Well, the existence of the other Big Bangs is a pure speculation right now, but it may not always be. But it, uh, it's not the case that the existence of the other Big Bangs we postulate only for anthropic reasons. No. I mean, you have other reasons for That's right. That, in yeah. fact, uh, Cardinal Schönborn, in his op-ed article, said precisely that the multiverse idea was invented in order to avoid the appearance of design in the universe. Yeah. And that's simply Th that's not, not true. true. It's historically not true. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, going back to the planets, which is a much easier case, of course, um, I've, I think you can turn this argument quite interestingly on its head and point out that it, since there are obviously going to be probably billions and billions of billions of planets, um, if, which is perfectly possible, only one of them has life, because we know no, nothing else than that, then we would have to say that our theories of the origin of life in our theories of the origin of life, we are looking for a chemical event which has to be quite staggeringly improbable uh, because otherwise we would expect the universe to be teeming with life. Well, you're the biologist. You would know better than I do. How improbable do you think it is? That, that's a quite separate question, and, and it's an interesting question. But what I'm saying is that the statistical argument allows us to postulate an event which would be so improbable that we would ordinarily call it impossible uh, because it only has to happen once.